A woman named Alice is held hostage at a terrorist group's headquarters in Chechnya. However, Ray Breslin's team is already there, pretending to be captives of the terrorists. Their mission is to rescue Alice. In this mission, Luke, Sue, and Jules pose as captives, while Kimmel disguises himself as one of the terrorists. When the captives are about to be executed on camera, the escape mission begins. Kimbrough's not here! He's got the keys! As they are about to leave, Kimrel is nowhere to be seen, delaying the mission by 40 seconds from the planned timing. When Kimrel finally arrives, they quickly rush out. However, due to Kimrel's delay, they are fired upon. Upon reaching the extraction point, they find Alice has been shot dead. They all blame Kimrel for Alice's death. They then get into a getaway car driven by Haz and Lee without taking Alice's body. After Ray's team returns to the Ray Breslin Company in Atlanta, Georgia, Ray calls Kimrel for a private talk. Without mincing words, Ray fires Kimrel for endangering the team during the mission and causing their target to die. Kimrel cannot argue and accepts the decision. I won't be needing your services anymore. Sometime later, Ray and Sue chat while playing King Dao. Ray mentions that he has fired Kimrel and warns Sue that Kimrel is dangerous. Ray also shares some tips and tricks with Sue on using instincts to survive and escape from prison. After a lengthy conversation, Ray advises Sue to take a vacation. Take all the time you need. A year later, Sue meets his cousin Sin and Yusing in Shanghai, China. Sin asks Sue to protect Yusing who is being targeted by various tech companies. Yusing is a genius but careless, having rejected many companies, which angered them. These are not the kind of guys who take no for an answer. Genius or not, he's careless. A few days later, Su accompanies Yusing to Bangkok for some fun. On their way back, they are ambushed by masked individuals. With no other choice, Su fights them. During the fight, Sue is shot with a stun gun. When he regains consciousness, Sue and Yusing find themselves in a prison called Hades. Sue is even forced to fight another inmate named the Kala. Okay. 
After winning the fight, Su gets some relaxation time in the sanctuary room. When there's no news from Su for a few days, has contacts Luke to inform him that Su is missing. However, Luke has already learned from Sin that Su and Yusing disappeared in Bangkok. No security tapes, nothing. All right, I'll look into it. In Hades prison, as Su is about to enter his cell, he sees Kinral there too. In his cell, Su keeps thinking of ways to escape the prison. Later, when Su receives his food, he is electrocuted and loses consciousness. When he wakes up, he is in an interrogation room. A man named Groger interrogates Su, asking him to persuade Yusing to hand over his patents to Groger's company. I need you to convince him to give that to me. You want to know who I am? I'm the zookeeper. Later, all inmates are summoned to a room called the zoo. Su asks Yusing about the patents Groger mentioned. Yusing explains that the patents are for advanced satellite cube technology, capable of taking over any computer system in the world. If this technology falls into the wrong hands, chaos would ensue. Ray and his team continue searching for Su. Based on the information gathered, Ray suspects that a company called Rusco, a competitor of Yu Sing's company, is behind Su's kidnapping. That night, Ray visits a bar to meet his friend DeRosa, asking for help in finding his missing team members. Soon after, a group of masked individuals attacks Ray. In Hades' prison, Sue devises a plan to escape. He sees someone leaving a room blindfolded and questions him. The man explains that he is a prisoner and a cook in Hades. Sue then approaches Akala and deliberately causes a commotion. When Sue regains consciousness, he finds himself in the medical room and sees that the doctor treating him is a robot. The next day, Akala approaches Sue, asking what he's planning. Meanwhile, outside the prison, Luke manages to track down and chase someone who knows Sue's whereabouts. Later, Sue and Yusing are forced to fight other inmates again. After winning the fight, Su and Yusing get some relaxation time in the sanctuary room. During this time, Su continues to analyze the prison layout. When the relaxation time ends, Su meets with Kimrel. Kimrel is surprised to see his former teammate in the prison. Su informs Kimrel that he has figured out the prison layout. On the other hand, Luke is captured and brought into the same prison as Su and Kimrel. Later, Luke, Sue, and Kimrel meet in the zoo room. Sue also convinces other inmates to join their escape plan. Kimrel suggests working with three inmates known as Legion, who are rumored to have information about the Hades prison layout. Meanwhile, DeRosa meets his friend Bag, asking for help in borrowing weapons. Thank you. Sue approaches Legion for assistance in escaping together. Initially, Legion refuses, but after Sue offers them access to the sanctuary room, they agree to help as they have never experienced the sanctuary. Outside the prison, DeRosa informs Ray that he knows who is behind Sue and Luke's kidnapping. In the prison, Sue wakes up to find himself handcuffed to a chair alongside Kinral. He is shocked to see Legion's leader captured and their escape plan exposed. Sue recalls Ray's warning about Kinral, and indeed, Kinral reveals he is the one who leaked their plan and is the leader of Hades' prison. Ray and his team have also discovered that Kinral is behind Sue and Luke's kidnapping, suspecting he did it for revenge after being fired a year ago and to profit from his new business. Hades has got to be somewhere. Yeah, the underworld. 
In the prison, Kinral forces Sue and Loot to fight all the inmates. Outnumbered, they can't put up much of a fight. Kinral also orders his men to capture Ray at his office. Once Ray is brought to Hades prison, Kinral meets him and belittles him, demanding Ray show the teamwork he once preached. Ray is then forced to fight all the inmates. After being beaten, Ray returns to his cell with a plan. He contacts his team outside using the communication device hidden in his mouth, informing them of the situation inside Hades' prison. They then plan their escape. Guys, we can trust in most of the spokes around. Be ready. find these guys I want in after mapping out the prison layout has attacks the Hades prison system shutting down all systems as the prison systems go offline race team and other willing inmates execute their escape plan pushing against pre-marked walls Kimrel realizes the chaos is caused by Ray and his team deploying all his men to capture them has contacts DeRosa, sending him the Hades prison coordinates. Meanwhile, Ray and the others reach the medical room. Legion hacks the medical room's computers while Luke asks Akala to guard Legion as they find a way out. However, Kinral's men quickly reactivate the prison systems and release toxic gas. Ray's team moves into the ventilation system. Akala and Legion are attacked and killed by Kinral's men. Closed circuit system activated. Up there! The intruders are on corridor 37. During the escape, Luke falls from the ventilation shaft and can't climb back up. Sue decides to help Luke while Ray heads to the control room and Yusing continues according to the plan. Along the way, Sue encounters Gregor while Ray reaches the control room and ambushes Kinral. I give up. But you're still in Hades. All the systems that Hush was attacking are now closed. You're never getting out of here. Yusing activates the solar energy system in the ventilation shaft, causing it to explode, signaling DeRosa outside. DeRosa breaks into Hades' prison taking down guards he encounters. Meanwhile, Ray and Kimbrel prepare for a one-on-one -on -one fight in the zoo room. Sue and Yusing escape Hayes prison and are picked up by Jules. Has informs Ray that Sue and Yusing are safe. Ray, Luke, and DeRosa remain inside Hades prison. Ray speaks to someone contacting Kimrel, realizing there is still someone else controlling Hades prison. Ray vows to find this person. We're gonna find you.
Shen Gun Lam Yet Spa. Tajo Shashi Huan Wong. We got visitors. Yeah. We got visitors! Devil Station. Status. Standing by. Something's wrong. See anybody? Nothing yet. He knows we're coming. Stay sharp, guys. Stay alert. You too. An Asian woman named Daya Zhang is negotiating to buy an old, unused building in Menfield, Ohio. Daya plans to turn the building into a factory. However, her bodyguard named Ba feels that Daya's father will not agree with this decision. When Daya contacts her father in Hong Kong, it turns out that he indeed disapproves of the decision. Daya's father, Zhang, is a conglomerate and owner of Zhang Innovation. During their conversation, Zeng's assistant informs him that Saudi Arabia wants them to build a prison in the middle of the desert. Honey, opening plants outside of China may not play so well here. I like both buildings. Ignoring her father's advice, Daya proceeds to buy the building. 
After deciding to invest in Menfield, Daya and her bodyguards head to the airport to return to their country on her private jet. However, Ba senses something is wrong and takes immediate action. It turns out that the airport officers are part of a criminal gang intending to kidnap Daya. The leader of the group then leaves a flash drive in Ba's pocket with the name Ray Breslin on it. In Los Angeles, Ray Breslin is conversing with Ross over the phone. They have decided to start a romantic relationship. In their conversation, Ross mentions that they need to find the disc they are looking for to ensure their names are not linked to the illegal prison activities of Ray's former colleague. All right, Ray, we gotta focus. A man named Senlo visits an office to find someone named Mr. Cow. While Sen is asked to wait, some people approach him intending to kill him. After subduing them, Sen enters the office and directly attacks Mr. Cow. Sen's goal is to retrieve the disc from Mr. Cow. When Sen is about to leave, Ray arrives and points a gun at him because Ray also wants the disc. However, Ray will allow Sen to take the disc after seeing its contents. Walk. At the police station in Menfield, Ba reports the incident that happened to him. Shortly after, Zing arrives and immediately asks Ba who kidnapped his daughter. However, Ba says he doesn't know who the perpetrators are. Zing blames Ba for failing to protect his daughter. Hey, whoa, whoa, get, get him out of here! Let's go, Rich. At his headquarters, Ray instructs Hess to examine the contents of the disc they obtained from Mr. Cow. Fortunately, their names do not appear on the list. Sen then reveals that he knows Ray because Ray has done business with Zhang. Hearing this, Ray denies it and says that the person who did business with Zhang is his former partner, Lester. Sen also explains that he knows everything because he is Zhang's former head of security. It turns out that all the technology behind the illegal prison belongs to Zhang. However, Sen plans to destroy Zhang due to personal issues. Shortly after, Ba arrives at Ray's headquarters to deliver the flash drive left by the group that kidnapped Daya. When checked, the flash drive contains a video of a man stating that by the time Ray sees the video, Daya Zhang will be in his hands and he will also come after Ray. It turns out Ray recognizes the man. The man is Lester Clack Jr., the son of Lester. Where's this place? Hush, go closer. On the wall. That's a person chapel. Eastern Orthodox, maybe? That. That picture. Daniel in the lion's den. After observing the location in Lester Jr.'s video, Ray contacts DeRosa to ask where the place is. DeRosa explains that the place is called Devil Station, about 200 miles outside Belarus. Ray asks for DeRosa's help in arranging transportation to the location. I'll take care of the transportation. All right, we'll be there tomorrow. I owe you. I'll go pack our bags, get the gear, be back in an hour. You got it. Break anything. I'm coming along. Let's go, mystery man. Lester Jr. contacts Zhang and expresses his disappointment that Zhang did not help his father when his father was killed by Ray's team. 
Lester Jr. demands Zhang to send $700 million. If not, he will kill Daya, Zhang's daughter, who he has already kidnapped. Elsewhere, while Ross is talking to Ray on the phone, she is ambushed by Lester's men and taken away. Ray, Senlo, and Ba rush to save Ross and Daya. Upon arriving in Belarus, Ray meets DeRosa, who has been waiting for his arrival. Ray introduces his team to DeRosa. Then, they move forward with their rescue mission. Sure it is. Before entering Devil's Station, Ray's team plans and strategizes to enter safely. Jules identifies one of the weakest guard points to enter, which is through a tunnel leading to the sewer. Meanwhile, one of Lester's men, also a friend of his father's, suggests that Lester kill Ross immediately. However, instead of taking the advice, Lester orders the man to follow his instructions. Soon, Lester learns about Ray's team's arrival through his security system. We got visitors. Yeah. We got visitors! Devil Station. Status. Standing by. Something's wrong. See anybody? Nothing yet. He knows we're coming. Stay sharp, guys. Stay alert. You too. Lester takes Daya to the rooftop and cuffs her there to lure Ray's team. However, Ba, who sees this, takes reckless action. Sen tries to stop Ba, but Ba insists on acting alone. As a result, both of them are captured. Showtime, everybody. Let's go. You know what to do. Go now. It turns out that the flash drive Lester left in Ba's pocket also serves as a tracking device. Because of this, Lester knows Ray's headquarters and kidnaps Ross, Ray's girlfriend, to lure Ray. Afterward, Lester kills Ba. Then, Lester contacts Ray and asks him to look at his phone. Ross's death at Lester's hands enrages Ray. Ray rushes to kill Lester's men one by one on his own. Meanwhile, Sen manages to grab a stun gun from one of Lester's men before being put into a cell. Once inside the cell, Sen gathers dry paper stuck to the cell wall and burns it to free his hands. Seeing smoke coming from the cell, two of Lester's men rush to check it. After taking down the men who came, Sen quickly frees Daya from her cell. However, shortly after, more of Lester's men come to ambush Senator Fortunately. DeRosa arrives just in time and eliminates the men ambushing Senator seeing this. Lester sends his top men to kill Sen and DeRosa. Meanwhile, he will deal with Ray Breslin.
Lester Jr. manages to confront Ray and engages in a shootout. During the shootout, Ray asks Lester why he killed Ross. Lester replies that Ross's life might be equivalent to his father's life, which Ray took. Shortly after, Ray manages to disarm Lester and beats him up badly. You wanted me? You got me. Come on. Really? Get up. At the airport, Zhang is waiting for his daughter, who has been rescued by Ray's team. However, when Zhang approaches his daughter who has just arrived, Daya prefers to leave with Sen because the man Zhang despises saved her life. It turns out that Sen and Daya are in love, but Zhang does not approve of their relationship. On the other hand, DeRosa tries to console Ray, who has lost his girlfriend. DeRosa tells Ray that he must forgive himself because it was not his fault. And since Ray owes DeRosa a lot, DeRosa invites Ray to vacation in South America. Ray does not refuse because he is also fed up with prison affairs. Before you say no, let me remember you owe me. It's music to me. Any ideas? I can't stay down the barrel of a gun again. Drop the gun, pal. If she dies. Uh -huh. Are you hurt? Don't get far. in there. They're ours. They're not far off now. Based on a true story, this film tells the struggle of a Soviet fighter pilot named Nikolai Kamlov, who was shot down over enemy territory. For 18 days, Nikolay tried to crawl back to his base alone, passing through German patrols and other dangerous threats. What is the full story? Let's watch together. Oh, oh, oh. 
Moscow, November 1941. On that day, a Soviet fighter pilot named Nikolay Komlob had just returned from duty. On his way, Nikolay saw a woman being robbed. Drop the gun, pal. She dies. Uh -huh. Are you hurt? Nikolay managed to save the woman, who was being robbed for her food ration coupons. After thanking Nikolay, the woman left, inadvertently leaving behind her handkerchief. Western Front, December 1941. Nikolay, along with another Soviet fighter plane, was on a mission to destroy a German convoy. After spotting the German convoy, Nikolay and his comrade launched an attack and succeeded in destroying it. However, as they were returning to the base, three German planes came to attack. The German planes managed to shoot down one of the Soviet planes, causing it to lose control and crash. The German planes then attacked Nikolay's plane. Nikolay's comrade, named Soda, tried to shoot the German planes with a machine gun, but the gun jammed. As a result, Nikolay's plane was hit, and its fuel tank started leaking. Nikolay was forced to make an emergency landing in enemy territory and was immediately fired upon by German soldiers on the ground. Despite the severe damage to the plane, Nikolay and Soda managed to land safely. After landing, the German troops found them. Nikolay and Soda fought back with whatever weapons they had, but when they ran out of ammunition, they tried to escape. Nikolay was hit by artillery and passed out but Soda managed to carry him to the river's edge and floated Nikolay on a piece of ice. First day stranded, Nikolay regained consciousness and was shocked to find himself on a piece of ice. Two German soldiers saw him, and Nikolay tried to run even though his leg was shot. He won't get far. After escaping, Nikolay burned part of the map he carried to warm himself and avoid hypothermia. A flashback shows Nikolay meeting the woman he had saved earlier, named Olga. That day, Nikolay gave his food ration to Olga and returned her handkerchief. They introduced themselves, and Olga promised to take Nikolay to the opera after the war. Olga Gunterova. My name is Nikolay, so you know. Third day, Nikolay ate berries buried in the snow, carved wood to make a fire, and melted snow for drinking water. At night, Nikolay was attacked by a wolf, but managed to drive it away. The next day, Nikolay continued his journey and was again chased by a pack of wolves to the edge of a forest guarded by German soldiers. A Soviet plane came and attacked the area. In his hiding place, Nikolay remembered his conversation with Olga about the opera. I've never been to an operetta before. I'm afraid it will have to be after the war. At the river, Nikolay found a frozen fish in the ice and ate it raw. 
During his journey, Nikolay fell into a trap but survived the sharp wooden stakes inside. Although the pack of wolves kept watching him, Nikolay lit a fire from the broken stakes to warm himself, but the smoke made it hard for him to breathe, and he passed out. When he regained consciousness, Nikolay felt hopeless and considered ending his life, but suddenly a wolf attacked him. Nikolay managed to kill the wolf with the sharp wooden stake in the trap. After coming to, Nikolay found himself on a pile of hay. It turned out that a local villager had taken Nikolay with his cart, trying to save him and hide him from the German soldiers. The local villager, a Bolshevik, brought Nikolay to his home for treatment. Mother of God. At the house, they checked Nikolay's condition. It turned out that the man was a Bolshevik. The local villager had a daughter and a son-in-law, a Soviet soldier named Ignat. The man was also hiding a Soviet military nurse named Missa. Missa said that Nikolay's condition was critical and needed immediate surgery. Ignat was tasked by his father-in-law to take Nikolay back to Moscow. Not long after, a German officer and some of his men suddenly arrived at the house. They asked the Bolshevik man to fix their broken motor equipment. It turned out that the Bolshevik man was a blacksmith. When the German officer entered the house, Ignat and Misov were already hiding in the basement with Nikolay. The German officer had already identified the local villager. While they were talking, Nikolay, in pain, made a noise. The German officer became suspicious and drew his pistol. The Bolshevik man said that the noise was just the sound of rats under his house. While sitting by the fireplace, the German officer saw a bowl used to treat Nikolay's wounds. The officer immediately checked the area where he had heard Nikolay's voice earlier. Fortunately, Ignat and Misa had already taken Nikolay away. Realizing that the Bolshevik man was hiding the Soviet pilot they were looking for, the German soldiers burned the house and executed the Bolshevik man along with his daughter and wife. As dawn arrived, the German officer and his two men began hunting for Nikolay. From a distance, they saw Ignat and Missa dragging Nikolay on a stretcher. However, a sudden snowstorm caused the German soldiers to lose their trail. Meanwhile, Ignat and Misa left Nikolay to scout ahead. Shortly after, the German officer found Nikolay. <laughs> Seeing the German officer dead, Ignat considered handing Nikolay over to the Germans to ensure his own safety. However, Misa became furious and struck Ignat. Ignat then walked away, leaving them behind. Soon after, Ignat was captured by the German soldiers for interrogation. He tried to escape but was shot by the Germans. During a break, Misa heard gunfire between Soviet and German soldiers. Misa planned to take Nikolay to the fighting Soviet troops. in there. They're ours. They're not far off now. That night, Misa reached the battlefield. She crawled, avoiding bullets as she moved through the combat zone. The Soviet troops saw Misa crawling towards them and eventually, she managed to bring Nikolay to the Soviet soldiers. Unfortunately, Misa was shot and killed during the attempt. I told you we'd make it. Nikolay was saved and taken to a Soviet military hospital. He was placed next to a soldier whose arm had been amputated. When Nikolay pulled back his blanket, he discovered that both of his legs had also been amputated. That night, as he slept, Nikolay dreamed of his deceased comrade, Soda. In
In May 1942, a nurse provided Nikolay with a pair of prosthetic legs. At the same time, in front of the hospital, the Moscow Theater Group held a benefit concert to entertain the patients. Nikolay heard Olga's name mentioned in the performance. When the show started, Nikolay put on his prosthetic legs and tried to walk to see Olga, but he was not yet able to walk with the prosthetics. Nikolay could only watch Olga from the hospital window. The next day, Nikolay began practicing walking with his prosthetic legs every day, both day and night. Nikolay continued to train and adapt to his prosthetic legs, but the doctor advised him to limit his exercise for a quicker recovery. Day by day, Nikolay exercised to regain his strength until he eventually recovered and walked in a park. Unexpectedly, in that park, Nikolay met Olga, who was giving out tickets to her theater performance to a nurse. After fully recovering, Nikolay and Olga eventually got married. Now, Nikolay is retired from being a fighter pilot. When Nikolay looked at the map he carried during his struggle to survive in enemy territory, he found a note from Misa. The note was written before Misa managed to bring Nikolay to the Soviet troops on the battlefield. Nikolay then gave the note to Misa's parents. Misa's father was a senior doctor in the Soviet military division. Nikolay asked Mesa's father for a recommendation letter to return to flying. Nikolay said Mesa's goal in saving him was for Nikolay to return to fighting and defeat the Germans. Although initially hesitant, Mesa's father eventually agreed. Captain. In January 1943, at a Soviet military airbase, a Soviet radio observer reported an ongoing air battle between Soviet and German forces. A Soviet plane had been shot down by a German aircraft, leaving Nikolay's plane as the primary target for the Germans. The Soviet airbase immediately sent reinforcements to support Nikolay. At that time, Nikolay was assigned to destroy a bridge. As he approached the bridge, Nikolay fired, but his shots missed the target. When he got closer to the bridge, Nikolay activated a smoke bomb, causing the German plane pursuing him to crash into the bridge. Nikolay successfully completed his mission. Upon arrival at the airbase, the pilots greeted Nikolay. He stepped out of his plane and collapsed. The other pilots thought Nikolay was drunk, but after one of the pilots explained that Nikolay was using prosthetic legs, all the soldiers at the base saluted Nikolay. This film is dedicated to the memory of the Soviet fighter pilots who served valiantly during the war against Germany. The character of Nikolay in the film is a composite of several heroic biographies of other Soviet pilots who returned to duty after losing their legs and continued to fight in the air. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.